Welcome to Manchatmosphere. Today I'm going to have a chat with Dr. Grant Allen, who is a reader at the Centre for Atmospheric Science at the University of Manchester. Welcome to Manchatmosphere, Grant. Thank you. Dr. Allen will have the opportunity to respond to only five questions. So, Grant, what aspects of atmospheric science are of interest to you? My research interests are really about trying to measure the composition of Earth's atmosphere, in particular trace gases and aerosols, uh, things that exist in very, very small concentrations in, in Earth's atmosphere, and trying to measure the fluxes of those from natural and man-made sources, and explain the trends of those gases and things in the atmosphere with time and why they might be impacting us. What specifically makes your research unique in your field? Uh, at Manchester we specialise in, in measurements of, of trace gases and aerosols, so my role within the research group is to lead on the measurements of, of greenhouse gases, in, in particular CO2, carbon dioxide, methane and N2O, nitrous oxide, three of the main greenhouse gases. And we employ a range of different measurement techniques from aircraft, from surface-based monitoring sites, to try and quantify the, the very precise concentrations of those gases in the natural environment and use that data to explain fundamental processes about the Earth and man's activity on the Earth to explain these atmospheric trends. What methods do you employ to execute your research objectives? We work with instrument developers to use the very latest technology in the measurement of, of greenhouse gases and other trace gases in Earth's atmosphere, trying to get to the very best um, precisions we can for measurement. So, for example, uh, we use quantum cascade laser absorption spectroscopy and cavity ring down absorption spectroscopy, which are, are relatively new technologies that are being developed all the time to measure the most precise concentrations that we can of these gases in the natural environment outside. For example, uh, we can measure methane with an accuracy of one second to within uh, you know, much less than actually two parts per billion, which is about one thousandth of its, of its background concentration in the atmosphere. So you could say that some of our instruments are as sensitive at sniffing out these gases as some of the, the best dogs. One of the other things um, that we, we pioneer at Manchester is the use of those types of measurement technologies on different platforms. So you can see in front of us here this uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, we call them drones, perhaps we shouldn't, that's not the, the strict definition, we call them unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. And we, we're developing instruments that can fit uh, on those and fly to measure fluxes of greenhouse gases from um, a lot of man-made and, and biogenic and natural um, activities, but with a focus on fugitive emissions from the oil and gas industry, uh, landfill, um, and, and perhaps fluxes from soils over peatlands and things. So we're really trying to drive this technology and platform technology in new directions. And as well as drones, uh, we do a lot of work with the UK's research aircraft, the Facility for Airborne Atmospheric Measurement, uh, a facility that um, Manchester has a lot of involvement with, and some of the instruments that measure greenhouse gases on, on that platform were also developed by us uh, here in Manchester. So why is your research relevant in the wider world? So the measurement of greenhouse gas flux is absolutely central to the correct framing of government and international policy obligations of trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and reduce the effect of climate change. So only by measurement-led case study approaches that try and quantify mass fluxes to the atmosphere from things like oil and gas, wetlands, tropical wetlands, arctic wetlands, um, landfills, can we really pin down what the components of the greenhouse gas inventory are in truth rather than a prediction or an assessment, using that quantification, then governments and international policymakers can better set the frameworks to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions in highly targeted areas where we can see that they're having the most impact. So really all of that work comes back to climate change reduction, uh, policy impact and informed uh, policy interventions. Finally, I'd like you to give me one exciting fact about your atmospheric research. So over the past 
five years or so, a lot of my research has, has been dominated by the measurement of methane flux. And um, some will know, not everyone will know, methane is the second most important greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. But it's rising at a rate of around about 1% per year. So it's rising faster than CO2. And actually, molecule for molecule, it's about 20 times more effective at trapping infrared radiation. So methane has the potential to, to become a very, you know, an even more important greenhouse gas. And because methane has a lot of natural sources uh, from carbon reservoirs like Arctic permafrosts, um, methane hydrates st stored in ocean, um, ocean basins, um, and, and tropical wetlands which respond to temperature change, then the natural feedbacks, the positive feedbacks that could be realised by rising temperature could lead to a runaway effect on the realisation, the liberation of all of this trapped methane in the Earth system. So it could become you know, a, a rapidly increasing greenhouse gas uh, in the future. So positive feedbacks of methane are kind of a message that it's important to get out. CO2 is something that arguably we can control, because we can reduce um, our emissions, the man-made emissions of CO2, but methane has all of these natural feedbacks where if we pass some tipping point, if you want to call it that, of temperature, then all of this methane can be liberated and realised into the Earth's atmosphere, makes a very dangerous greenhouse gas. Well, thank you, Dr. Grant Allen. It's been a pleasure chatting to you on Manchat Atmosphere. Thank you very much.